Well, welcome on this very beautiful spring morning to the 17th commencement ceremony of the Global Master of Arts program and the seventh for the Global Master of Arts March class. This year, this moment marks an important milestone in what we call GMAP history because we're now coming to the end of the celebration of our 10th year. We have completed our first decade of this wonderful program. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you our platform guests, our staff, and some people in the audience. First, it is with enormous pleasure that I welcome Juman Wang um, here this morning. Juman is our speaker. She graduated with the first GMAP class 10 years ago, one of those bold, risk-taking, innovative people who came to us in our first year. Next, I'd like to introduce Kostin Kowalczyk. He will be our faculty greeter today. Very fitting that Karsten should be doing this. He has taught every GMAP student. Diana Chigas, we're not quite in the order I have in my, uh, in my notes, but I think that's all right, who has taught you all negotiation and conflict resolution. Diana, by the way, in addition to other degrees, has a degree, a mall degree, from the Fletcher School. Kim Wilson has taught you humanitarian studies, always with a wonderful sense of humor and sense of commitment. Jeff Taliafaro has taught you about the world of security studies and crisis management. Anna Seleni is, of course, your professor of international politics. She has introduced you to the good and the evil and the in-between of the world. Bernard Simonin, last but not least, of course, has taught you leadership, leadership in the business world. In our audience today, we have representatives of the Department of Defense and two friends of very long standing, I will mention, Mr. Richard Janal and Ron Reynolds, people to whom we're greatly indebted. Can I get you to stand up? It's good to see you. And of course, I have to again introduce the class, but also all your families, to the marvelous staff who's worked with you for this entire year. So Emma Heffern, our Associate Director, Marnie Powers, who has taken over so marvelously this year when Emma has been on maternity leave, Nikki, are you back there? Nikki is the associate director who brought you all in. I think she's back there with Nicole Sanderson, our manager of technology. And in addition, Jennifer Weingarten and Maura Rafferty from the, direct, from the Office of Development and uh, Alumni Affairs are here with us today. We're meeting this morning in this very historic place this is Goddard Chapel of Tufts University. It was once a universalist uh, house of worship. Today, it is non-sectarian and non-denominational, as is our university. But its roots do go back to this religion, the universalist religion, which I always, I think I reminded you that first evening in Coolidge Hall to where we're returning for our brunch this morning, but when we met that first night and had our, what we call our convocation dinner, I told you about the odd and old religions of New England. And the universalist religion believed that everybody went to heaven, be they universalist or not. And I think that was a wonderful start for this university, which has become such an international university. The Fletcher School is part of that university, it is the oldest professional graduate school of international affairs in the United States. We're very, very proud of that. It was founded in 1933. If you recall the year 1933, it was a turning point in US foreign policy. We had not joined the United Nations. We made that decision 
and instead we were pursuing an isolationist policy. The people in this university, led by Austin Fletcher, one of the trustees, believed that was a wrong policy. And they pulled together scholars and practitioners from Tufts, from down the road at Harvard, and from all over the United States to think about what kind of education would work to train the people who needed to know about the world in order to make the world a better place. Remember, in 1933, there were enormous changes going on in Europe as Hitler gained power and was beginning his march to supremacy. What they did with Austin Fletcher's money was to create this school. We like to call it a beacon of hope in an age of despair. I think we've always been a beacon of hope in an age of despair because it seems as though almost every age is an age of despair for somebody somewhere around this globe. From the beginning, the school was international. Everything about it was international. Its faculty was international, its students were international, and its curriculum was international. We have a three-part curriculum. We started it then, we have it until today. It includes international organization and law, which should not surprise you given that the school was formed by people who believed in international organization and law, and you have all taken a course in international organization and law. In addition, of course, we had international diplomacy and history and politics, and a good part of your curriculum has been in that field. Interestingly, though, also from the beginning, international economics and business, such foresight, such brilliance on the part of the founders. And you have all had several courses in international economics and business. So our school has grown dramatically. It began with about 35 students, about the size of the GMAP class. Many people say we are like the original Fletcher because we're so small um, and so intimate. In many ways, it's surprising that such a school that's so traditional and has such a long and distinguished history, perhaps not long for some of you from other areas of the world, but for us, 75 years seems long. But it may seem strange that a school such as this, the only school of international affairs, we believe in the world, we know in the United States, to come up with a program like this that combines the technologies of the 21st century with the traditional mission of the school. So it was Jack Galvin, the dean at that time who had been supreme allied commander of NATO, in many, many ways a Renaissance man. He was also a poet and had a master's degree in English from that very fine university, Columbia University. But under his leadership, we commenced to educate people around the world, professionals, mid to high level career professionals who could not leave their jobs and their countries to come to the Fletcher School. And we combined technology and intimate residencies and knowing your faculty so very, very well and created the Global Master of Arts program. It began as a visionary endeavor in the year 2000. I think it's a perfect year to have begun at the turn of the century. We now have over 500 GMAP graduates. Um, we're very, very, very uh, proud of them. We call them the G500 because they hold, they hold such an enormous amount of information, expertise, and experience. And we're hoping to find a way to use this education and this experience of the 500, of the G500 in the future. But that's the challenge of the next decade. We've met the challenge of the first decade, and that's very exciting. Anywhere you go in the world, anytime there's a crisis, there is a GMAPper there. And it's because of the nature of this program. I should mention that someone from um, the other class, we have two GMAP classes. She will be graduating in July. 
Um, she's Egyptian. She heads a pro-democracy uh, nonprofit in Egypt. She was just elected in the past two months to the negotiating committee of the protesters in Tahrir Square to negotiate um, with the government of Egypt. Her name is Dalia Zayida. Uh, she was there just two weeks ago. We had a GMAP graduate from the class of 2007 email us and said, I was listening to the terrible crisis in Japan. And the cabinet minister was speaking, and I thought I recognized the translator's voice. And I wrote to Yukiko Noguchi, and I asked her, is that you? And she said, of course it's me. I'm doing this around the clock. And I'm sure she wasn't only translating in a brilliant way, but I'm sure she was also doing something in regards to the crisis itself. I should say, by the way, if you're able to come to my office, Yukiko dedicated my office to the memory of her mother who died during the year that she was a student. So there's a wonderful flower um, that represents uh, Yukiko's mother in my office. I should also like to mention there's another student from the very first GMAP March class here with us today. He is also from Japan. He's doing his mauled at, the, at, at Fletcher right now. He's going home on Monday, I think it is. We're thrilled that he's joining us uh, for brunch. Ichiro Inoue, thank you for being with us. It's really thoughtful of you. And I think it tells you how much you know, we are a community, that he would come and celebrate uh, your commencement with you. Well, this GMAP class arrived on campus 49 weeks ago. We were over in the Coolidge Room. I think at this moment, you were getting computers upstairs on the seventh floor. During the year, there have been many, many good things that have happened. There have been promotions. There have been babies born. There have been babies conceived. Um, 